is Pat Batt uh, for uh, Committee of the Whole on Bill 48, Crown's Right of Recovery Act. So one of the things that I, I, I believe I heard um, either by the sponsor of the bill or one of the first speakers to this bill was that um, some of the, uh, the local anti-tobacco um, uh, groups were in favor of uh, Section 1. And um, in fact, I had a telephone conversation um, uh, with the... Um, the action on smoking and health, um, and that was followed up with, with an email uh, in which he clarified that his organization has not uh, offered an opinion um, on uh, Section um, <clears throat> 1, um, Part 1, I'm sorry, Part 1 of this bill, um, because as he rightly points out, criminal justice is not his mandate. Um, their mandate is, is around, uh, you know, as uh, to eradicate uh, smoking and, and use of tobacco products um, uh, in our fair province. Uh, and so to have said that they were supportive of Part 1 is, uh, is not correct, and I, I now have it in writing um, to, uh, to support that. And of course they, uh, they at the same time supplied me, and I'm sure every member of the, of the House, with uh, um, lots of information on how everybody else is doing. Um, British Columbia has currently got um, uh, an appeal going now on a, court, on a court case that they in fact started, uh, started in, in, I think, 2005 um, uh, on their tobacco damages and health care recovery, uh, sorry, health care cost recovery act. Um, and you know, they, they were proven right when that went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court denied the permission to appeal, sorry, denied permission to appeal on August the 5th, 2007. Um, New Brunswick has um, also gone through a, a similar series. Um, and uh, on, in September of 2007 announced that it, uh, it had lawyers that were uh, being brought together to sue um, for uh, tobacco-related illnesses on a contingency fee basis. Um, and that was filed uh, March 13th, 2008, and is ongoing. Um, so, so far, there's Ontario, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland and Labrador who have uh, commenced um, uh, actions. I. I fail to understand, and I have also failed to get an, an ex a satisfactory explanation from uh, the government proponents of this bill as to why they included Part 1, because it was going to make what should have been clear sailing for a bill, uh, you know, in any number of um, sports metaphors, a slam dunk uh, to pass this bill through with, with Parts 2, 3, and 4 in it whatever possessed them and what was the compelling argument to include part one uh, we have failed to hear that argument uh, put to, on this floor in a way that's at all convincing to me anyway um, so why they had to make it that difficult I don't know because now yeah, I mean fair enough there's Albertans saw fit to put 70 of you people in here I'm sure you're going to pass your own act um, but the number of problems it creates, I would argue, uh, it far outweighs uh, any solution that it was actually presenting here. Um, and the second um, and related question to this is, where is the government going with this? Now, the, the Minister of Health was quoted in um, some newspaper articles as saying, no, 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 it stops here. Um, he's... Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to go any further than sort of chasing down um, criminals to recover um, uh, health-related court costs. And he swears that it's not going to go any further with that. And I go, well, yeah, you said that a lot about, about, about a lot of other things that weren't going to go further, and we saw them go further. You know, there was going to be a limited number of private clinics and 
there, you know, there'd only be so many things, so many health care procedures that would be contracted out and, and it would save us money instead of costing us 10% more. And, you know, there's all kinds of promises that I've heard from this government that have just turned out to be absolutely specious. So um, where are they going with this? Is this uh, uh, being put in place? Um, the obvious conclusion is it's being put in place so that the government can start to pursue people for... Uh, um, conditions, m medical conditions in their life over which they may or may not have any uh, control. So, um, you know, chasing down um, people with, uh, you know, uh, overeating people to pay for diabetes, uh, um, denying um, smokers any kind of surgery or treatment for pneumonia, uh, or making them pay for uh, the costs of that. And I just think, oh yeah, go to court and try and prove that this person's pneumonia is, you know, was caused by the fact that they smoked for X number of years. What if the person's quit smoking? I mean, all I can see is a huge number of complications and an awful lot of taxpayer money being paid out to lawyers to argue this in court. Um, and you know, even if it's even if it's lawyers that are on the government payroll, taxpayers are still paid for this. Um, so it, to me, this defies logic, and I have, I, and the government has failed to make a compelling argument uh, about why it would stop there, because it seems very clearly to have started on a progression of things, uh, and has given me no compelling argument either than the minister saying it won't happen, uh, um, as to why it's not going to continue on, and I. Uh, I would like to see the business case for this. I would like to see uh, some evidence uh, from other um, jurisdictions where they have pursued this kind of thing that this actually pays off for Albertans. This actually doesn't cost Alberta taxpayer more money uh, in trying to implement this than whatever it costs they think they might be able to recover. Uh, now, I mean, the, the uh, ministers made the point that, you know, yes, of course, they'll be able to recover money from criminals uh, for health rate aid costs because not all criminals are poor. True, uh, but I tend to argue, and I bet you we could find some evidence that would tend to say the smart ones are also the rich ones, and they're probably not the ones that got caught. Uh, on the other hand, the ones that weren't quite so bright are the ones that got caught, and they're probably the ones that don't have a lot of money on them. So I think there's, there's other things at play there rather than whether they actually have money or not. Um, so I am uh, still waiting to hear some compelling arguments from the government as to why it's chosen to take this particular route because I think it has just created a huge mess for itself, and I don't understand why they did, um, why they attached this to this particular bill and made something that should have been very straightforward and easy uh, incredibly complicated and now, I think, uh, slower moving. So uh, I'll take my seat and hopefully I will hear something from government members as to why these choices that were made that would encourage me to uh, support this bill wholeheartedly uh, rather than with uh, a great deal of trepidation.